everyone, it's Julia. I have this very interesting box sitting here and, I, and a story behind it. My sister had called me about a month ago and she was cleaning out her closets and asked me with, if I wanted mom's wedding dress. And I thought, what are you talking about? And she, well, here she had mom's wedding dress in this box in her closet for probably the last 20 years. We're both downsizing. We're at that age of our age in our you know life that we're both downsizing, and I really didn't want mom's wedding dress, but I didn't want it to throw it away, and I certainly didn't want to just take it to a, a random thrift store. And so we got our heads together, and we decided to make gifts for the three granddaughters. And I ended up make, making these little pouches. And then at the end of this video, I'll show you some of the really clever, cute little things we decided to put inside. I hope you join me. Let's get started. So I'm opening this box here and under the layer of tissues, um, I discovered, first of all, the, the head piece that she had. And I remember my sister being um, a bride for Halloween and I really think that this was part of her costume because it was in really bad shape. But some of the original napkins for their reception this was a thing she carried, I believe. There were ribbons. I also think probably part of the Halloween costume. And then the Bible that she carried. And then these <laughs> 1940s shoes. You gotta love it. And then here's the dress. It is, it is just beautiful. And, you know, it's so cool to think that my mom made this. And it, it's out of a heavy, heavy satin. The quality of this fabric was just outstanding. And look at that little waist. I just got such a kick out of it. Um, lots, lots of fabric. It has a, a train on it, long sleeves, a zipper on the side. And she also had just beautiful buttons that she had covered. The buttons are on the sleeves and then also all the way down the back of it. I'm taking a big breath here and I am going to start cutting. I just decided um, to make these bags at the same size as a piece of copy paper which is eight and a half by eleven and that design that you see on there is going to be an applique that I am going to be putting on these bags as well. Just cutting through two layers at a time. I do have three of these to make, so I'm going to be cutting out six pieces of this out of the satin. Also, uh, two pieces of the lining. I'm just using this floral, and then two pieces for each of the bags for of the batting. And everything is cut to eight and a half by eleven. I'm laying a piece of that batting in my box, and I'm spraying this with my temporary spray basting spray this satin you, you know is satin and it moves and this this really worked well to keep that into place I do want to quilt both the fronts of these bags and the backs of these bags and so that is my next step I realized that this satin is not good for any marking pens I couldn't use my fabric my, my heat erase pens left a mark and so did my water soluble pens and so I took a piece of freezer paper and I ironed it right down a diagonal straight um, line so I had something to go by when I'm at my sewing machine to get that first line nice and straight. I'm going to be using my um, easy feed foot and this quilter, quilting guide. Now I've had this in my sewing accessory box for years and with many different sewing machines and I never used it really didn't even know what it was for but lit, for this type of a thing it is awesome now that this even feed dog foot is going to feed both the front and the top and the bottom together or at the same time and so it's wonderful for satin um, it's just going to feed it so much better and so much more even so I have my, I just went right down the edge of that freezer paper and now I'm removing that freezer paper. I did not go through that freezer paper, I just used it as a guide. And now it's on to lowering that little quilting guide there right on that first stitch line. And that is going to give me the, an even line all the way down. 
going diagonal on this pouch. Once I'm done with this line, I'm going to be putting that little guide on that previous stitch line and just continuing until this entire thing is quilted with these diagonal lines. And all the lines are going to be at the right width apart. And like I said, I quilt both the front and the back of this. And those lines are just parallel. And this is what it looks like. This satin was just gorgeous and really heavy. It was so fun to work with. Now I'm using that same freezer paper for the back side of this and I was able to use it about three times before, before it just no longer stuck anymore. So I've got all my pieces quilted there, all six of them. And it's onto that applique. I'm using freezer paper again for this applique and that um, uh, the plastic side is down and I'm drawing with just a mechanical pencil on the on the top top side of that or, or the paper side of that freezer paper. Again what a wonderful way to cut an applique on satin. It, it didn't move at all. I'm just going to be ironing this and this is ironing I'm ironing this right on the the top or the right side of this um, satin. The freezer paper does not leave any residue either so you can feel confident to, to, to work on the right side of your fabric. Now cutting that applique out, um, this time right on the line. It's so hard to see it there. I had such a bright sunny day here but it's laying right where I want it on my piece and I removed that, that paper. Now I could have sprayed this but I didn't want to and I probably could have used adhesive but I did not want to at all because I want to be able to stuff this applique. So I wanted that layer to be completely um, separate from the other layers. So I'm just going to be zigzagging this into place and I'm using my even feed dog foot for this as well just because I didn't want it to move and it really did help for that. So that applique is just laying on, on top I, and it's just pretty much in, in place with just this one single pin. I'm doing a narrow zigzag here. I ended up having to go around these petals more than once however and I used um, not on the same line but um, in a little ways. I just felt that like they needed more to be more secure. Because then my next step is I'm going to be stuffing these little petals and I, I, they needed to be more, more secured. I pinched that top layer so it was, uh, so I wouldn't, it was completely separate. I didn't want to snip through it. And I'm just snipping that back batting and, that, and then that under layer. Just taking little pieces of fiber fill and stuffing them into those leaves. I do want to leave the center of this flat because I'm going to be doing a different type of a detail in the center of these petals. I found this interesting thread at, at the thrift store and I'm going to see if I can find it and I'll link it down below. It's not metallic I don't believe but it is it has a real shine to it. It looked wonderful on this satin and I have three colors so I'm going to be using a different color for each one. What, my, what I wanted to do with this is to flatten the middle and add some, some detail with this decorative th thread. So I have my feed dogs dropped and my darning foot on and I'm just doing a circle there just to, to outline that center. And now I'm switching to zigzag stitch and I'm going to be doing free motion zigzag in the center of this. This is a wonderful way to add, um, to, to fill something really quickly. It goes really fast um, and it just makes a really fun texture. I wanted this center to be flat. Just kind of going in a circle, but then I kind of go all over. And here I sped up quite a bit and I ended up breaking my thread and I'll be changing it here in a second. But um, I'll have to say this thread was easy to work with. I, I had a lot easier time with it than a lot of metallics that I've used in the past. 
just threading my machine here. Thank goodness for those self-threading machines. It takes no time at all. And I'm off again. And I, here's the lavender one and the blue one. The blue one got a little wonky. That was the first one I did. But it, it worked out just fine at the end. On to trimming. Just wanting everything to be squared up and even. You're always going to have to do some squaring once everything is quilted. Now we're doing the zipper. You take your zipper and you, and you flip it face down on the front of your pouch. You line up that end and you put a clip in it. This zipper is longer than I need. It's a 14 inch zipper. You want to be able to just to pull that, that um, zipper pull right off the end and not even, it doesn't even get in your way when you're sewing and, and placing some clips all the way across the top of this. Now I'm placing my lining face down and I'm sandwiching that zipper in between. Removing those clips and just clipping that lining into place. You want to make sure that zipper is right at the edge so you have those three different edges right up there. And I'm going to be straight stitching this. And I just use my regular sewing machine. And, and I don't have a zipper foot here, but you can use a zipper foot. Um, but I'm just using a quarter of an inch um, seam allowance, basically. So I'm just using my foot, my regular foot as a guide. This is the easiest method of putting a zipper in. If you're a beginner sewer and afraid of zippers, just start making pouches. It'll take, take that fear away. It's really sim a simple process. Once that first um, part is on, you want to just get that lining smoothed down on the back. Usually take it my, to my ironing board and just press that good. And then I will be top stitching this just to keep everything into place. Just running a straight stitch across. Got that straight stitch done, and that part of the bag is, is complete. And now it's onto the other side. So this is the back side of my pouch, and I have my right side up, and I flip that down over the top of that zipper, lining up that end, getting in there again now and removing that zipper pull, and then putting my clips in. So now my um, the, the front of this bat is is down so I, I can see my batting right now and again lining that zipper so it's right at the very edge there and now I'm going to be adding that lining just like I did before you want the, the right sides together so my lining is facing now facing that front of the of the of it the front of the back I know that's confusing but getting that lining underneath those clips and again going to be taking this to my sewing machine and sewing that. Ironing it the same way as we did before and then again top stitching. That part is complete. I'm gonna open up my zipper now, but you do not want it off the end. So it has to be open, but it can't be off the end. And I open it up so that my bag is on the left-hand side, my lining's on the right-hand side. This part of the zipper, you wanna fold so those teeth are going towards the lining. And that's the first clip I put in, just to hold that into place. Clips are wonderful when you're putting a zipper in. Going all the way around, just adding those clips. Now on this side, that zipper is going to be open and you still want those teeth facing the lining. And that's another, another place that you want to keep a, keep a clip. Now we are going to leave an opening in this lining and that is how we're going to turn the bag. And I usually about a six inch opening and I'm going to mark that just so I don't forget it with a sewing machine. And I do go back and forth and secure my stitch when I start and when I end. Go all the way around. I'm taking about a three eighths inch 
seam allowance, a little bit less than a half inch. And now you trim and you trim that zipper all the way off, trimming those corners and turning it in right sides out, just through that opening in the lining, poking out the holes. And then I will be closing up that opening in the lining just by folding that over and then running a straight stitch across that. Now it's time just to get that lining back where it belongs, right in the bag. And now it's on to something that I did. I figured out what I wanted to do with those some of those buttons. I have I'm using my ink tense pencils for this just to add some color to the top of those of that satin. Didn't have a clue whether this was going to work. A satin's not cotton, but it did keep the the, the um, color really well. But I you can use I think anything you really want for this. I just happen to have my ink tense pencils on my my table, so I use that. But paint would work. Or acrylic paints. I do like the watercolor look of the of the pencils. I added water first. I seemed that seemed to work the best, and then added the pencil and then again activated with more water. I colored it four from for each of the bags. And let those sit to dry. Then I added three as a cluster um, to the middle. And then the other one I took a bulb pen, pin or a garment pin they're sometimes called and just strung one on to that pin and right through the zipper as a zipper pull. And that's it, that completes the bag. And now on to the goodies that we added. I made, first of all, these lavender sachets with lavender buds. I'll link that video down below on how I make these. But they stamped so well. I, I had no idea that I could even st stamp on, um, sat on satin, but it, they, it worked really well. And then on the inside, my sister found the these Christmas cards that my mom and dad had sent out for their first Christmas. And it's my so my mom is wearing this dress, which I thought was just so cool. And then some actual um, recipes that my mom and one of them is um, her her handwriting. And this is a recipe, a gingerbread recipe that oh my gosh, it was so good. So that was just really sweet. Some personal photos of of them with with grandma and grandpa. And then we found some letters that my dad sent home when he was in the war. He was in World War II, he was in the Navy. Very interesting. This one is actually on the Navy letterhead and it's dated February 17th, 1943, Pearl Harbor. So they're going to get um, copies of these letters. We're gonna keep the original um, somewhere safe. But that's what's going to be going inside. I hope this has given you some ideas. I think this is a wonderful little gift. Um, and, and all three of these grandkids are, are in their 30s, so they're not little. But I know they're going to absolutely love them. And it just has a lot of meaning behind it. I hope you all enjoyed this video. Have, hope you have a chance to create. Bye for now.